Hello everyone, in this lecture I'm going to cover inverse kinematics. So previously we looked at the forward kinematic problem. What is the pose of the tooltip of the robot given joint configurations Q? And in this lecture we are going to solve the opposite problem. Here we are on our roadmap. So given a pose of the robot tooltip X, then what joint configurations Q can achieve it? The inverse kinematics problem can be stated like so. Given a desired end effector pose X in M dimensions, then find a set of joint positions Q in N dimensions that satisfies the forward kinematics equation. X is some vector function of Q or some equivalent. In other words, we want to solve Q is some inverse function of X. So the motivation for the forward kinematics, we have some kind of robotic environment and we have a desired end effect to transform to grasp an object, that is the base to the objects then we need to find a joint configuration Q to reach the object. So the base to the end effector must equal this desired transform. There are two approaches to inverse kinematics. The first covered in this lecture is the closed form solution. So we have some explicit equation for solving Q given X. The second is to use mathematical optimization where we can minimize the pose error between the desired and actual end effector transform given the joint configuration Q. Let's try and solve the inverse kinematics of a two-link planar robot. We know from the forward kinematics that X is a vector function of Q, which is equal to this expression here. Then the inverse kinematics problem is, what is Q1 and Q2? So how do we solve this inverse of the forward kinematics given X for Q1 and Q2? To solve this, we need some trigonometry. So from Pythagoras' theorem, we know that d squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. But by the law of cosines, we also know that d squared is l1 squared plus l2 squared minus 2l1 l2 cos alpha. So we have the link lengths l1 and l2 and the angle between them alpha. And I just solve for cos alpha, which gives this expression here. But we also know that Q2 must equal pi minus alpha, since these two must sum to 180 degrees. And therefore cos Q2 is cos pi minus alpha, and using trigonometry we get this expression, and this should be 0, and this will give negative 1. Therefore we have this expression, and this is equal to the negative of this here. So what we have is two p potential configurations for joint Q2. The first being pi minus the cosine inverse of this, this expression, which I've gotten from here. And the other being the inverse cosine of this expression here. So we have two solutions and keep this in mind when moving forward. Now to solve for Q1, we can use the tangent rule again. That is, tan of Q1 plus beta must equal y over x. And solving for Q1, we get this. And we, now we just need to solve for beta. And using the law of cosines, we can see that beta will be the inverse tangent of L2 sine Q2 over L1 plus L2 cos Q2. And hence... Q1 is inverse tan of y on x minus the inverse tan of this expression here. From our inverse kinematics, we can see that there are two joint configurations, Q in two dimensions, for a given end effect pose x in two dimensions, as I've shown here. So we have either the elbow up or the elbow down. Right, so here's the first solution for the joint angles Q or this second solution here. Let's try and solve the inverse kinematics for a three-link manipulator. So the forward kinematics expression is given by x is the sum of all these and y is the sum of all these. Where I've used this notation because the trigonometry is very long and complicated. So the task space is given by x and y, 
and this is in the set of real values in two dimensions. And the joint or control space is given by Q1, Q2, Q3. And this is in the set of real values in three dimensions. What this means is that M, which is equal to two, is less than N, which is equal to three. This system is underdetermined and thus has infinitely many solutions. So how on earth are we going to solve this problem? The trick to this problem is that because we have infinite joint solutions, the end effector orientation psi can be set almost arbitrarily, as you can see in this diagram. Then the position of the second link frame is given by P2 is X minus L3 cos psi and Y minus L3 sine psi, right? And now we just need to solve the inverse kinematics to solve the first two joints. So effectively now we've set the position of the third link and we're left with two links and we're solving a two link robot. And we already know this solution. So we need the inverse kinematics Q1 and Q2 for the position of the second link. So given psi and the position of the second link frame, then the first two joint angles of the manipulator are Q2, which we saw previously had two different solutions, and Q1, which is given by this expression here. And finally, the third joint is simply Q3 equals psi minus Q1 plus Q2. And as you can see in this diagram here, we have the angle up, joint elbow up and elbow down for this configuration but also all the potential possible configurations we could have set the third link. And this is only a few of infinitely many. Let's look at the insights we've gained from the inverse kinematics problem. For a task space X in a set of real values in M dimensions and joint configuration space Q in a set of real values in N dimensions, if M is equal to N, that is we have the same number of joints to task space, there are finite joint configurations to achieve this end effect to pose. If N is greater than M, that is we have more joints than the task space, there are infinite joint configurations to achieve the end effect to pose. A robot with more degrees of freedom in the control space than required by the task space is said to be redundant. Advantages of redundancy are things like avoiding joint limits, avoiding collisions with obstacles, or minimizing joint velocity, joint torque, or energy consumption. So there are lots of things we can do with a redundant robot. What if we tried to solve the inverse kinematics of a complex robot arm like the Sawyer here, which has seven joints? This is very difficult, and sometimes an analytical solution may not even exist. And certain robot geometry can be exploited for wrist-type robots, uh, such as the Puma 560. However, we can alternatively use mathematical optimization to solve the inverse kinematics. But basically, we can let the computers do the work for us. To summarize inverse kinematics, given a desired end effector pose X in M dimensions, find a feasible joint configuration Q in N dimensions. There are two approaches. First, to use closed form solutions, as we saw in this lecture, and the second is to use optimization. We saw that for, we have finite solutions for M is equal to N, and we have infinite solutions for M is less than N.